What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, How My Entitled Aunt and Uncle's Crappy Parenting Came Back to Bite Them in the Behind. This is the story of the downfall of my aunt and uncle. My aunt, dad's older sister, has always doted on her son. I'm Indian and in my country, son preference is a pervasive social disease. Most people, regardless of social status, religion, etc., place great value in their sons and daughters are seen as a burden on the family. My aunt was no exception. Ever since she was a kid, she had had this messed up, one-sided competition with my dad. I, a woman, am my dad's only child. This gave her an opportunity to constantly make passive-aggressive remarks that my dad was so unfortunate to have a daughter. His line would end with him, etc, etc. She and her husband spoiled their son to the point that he became a narcissistic bully. He would often mock my stutter, cheat on his girlfriends, and make unreasonable demands of his parents. But did they ever try to discipline him and say no to him? Of course not. Their prince could do no wrong. If he made fun of my stutter, I was a piece of trash who deserved it. If he cheated on his girlfriend, she must have neglected him. If he made sexist remarks about his female boss, well, he's a man. You get the picture. Years went by and he just kept getting worse. When he was living with them, he at least pretended to respect them. But when he landed a very high paying job and was able to move out, it was as if he forgot they even existed. He and his wife hardly ever spoke to them. By now, my uncle had retired. My aunt had never worked. They had very little money left as they had spent it all on their son. They had paid for his education, his vacations, his wedding. Now they barely had enough to put food on the table. My dad would help them as much as he could. In 2011, my cousin's wife became pregnant. And during her third trimester, my cousin asked his parents to move in with him and his wife. We all knew it was because they wanted free caretakers for the baby. But my aunt just couldn't shut up about how wonderful her son was for wanting to take care of his parents. By now, I was well established in my field and was looking forward to a successful career. She taunted my father one last time, saying my education and career would be of no use as I was just a daughter and could never take care of him the way her son would take care of her. My dad just smiled and wished her well. She and her husband moved to my cousins, who lived in another city. My dad would often receive calls and texts from her bragging about what a great life they had. She sounded a bit too chipper. My dad began to suspect that all wasn't right. About six months after they left, my dad said he was going to visit them as he was getting worried about his sister. He asked me and my stepmom to accompany him. We reluctantly agreed. We arrive at their place and it is truly stunning a luxurious home in a posh locality. This was no surprise, as my cousin is very successful. What did shock us was the way he was treating his parents. They were practically servants in his house. My aunt tended to the baby, cooked and cleaned. My uncle tended to the gardens, took care of the cars, and went grocery shopping, etc. My cousin could easily afford maids, drivers, etc. But why would he when his parents were now his free slaves? What was even worse was the way he treated them. My cousin-in-law would often yell at my aunt and would just order her around. My uncle had this vacant and defeated look in his eyes. I never liked him but couldn't help but feel a tinge of pity. My dad took my aunt aside and told her that she didn't have to live like this, that he could make arrangements for her and her husband. My aunt put on a fake smile and said, Nonsense, we couldn't be happier. Anytime my cousin or his wife said anything cruel to her or told her to shut up when she tried to make conversation, my aunt would put on a smile and act as though it was just the sweetest thing anyone has ever said to her. It would have been funny had it not been so pitiful. Memories of all the horrible things she had said and done to me and my dad were still fresh in my mind. And the schadenfreude was real. My aunt's fake, rueful smiles and the way she tried to cover up how her son was really treating her is the cringiest thing I have ever seen. My aunt and uncle often stress the importance of having a male heir. They claimed that their son would be their provider while I, a daughter, would be a burden till the day I was married off. Surprise, surprise, the exact opposite has happened. 
while they were basically slaves in their son's house, I'm unmarried, have a loving partner, wonderful pets and friends, and a great career. My dad has his own restaurant and seems very happy with his work. Entitled parents often assume that their kid can be a booty hole to everyone else, but he would never do that to them. Boy, are they in for a shock. This story is called, Entitled Mother Sells My Dog to a Stranger in a Different City, Hides It From Me for Five Years. I'm gonna try and keep this short. I'm 15 and live in Croatia, so apologies if some words are wrong or if I misspell some things. Cast. Entitled mother? Me? My dad? The man who bought my dog? He's a very good person who is clueless about the whole thing. Backstory. I had a small dog called Bongo. I know it's a weird name, but I was young and I really wanted a dog named Bongo. Bongo went missing when I was 10, so my mom said. I was very sad when that happened and didn't talk to anyone for a week. My mom tried to cheer me up by taking me to the toy store and to buy me a Hot Wheels car, but she mostly bought herself clothes and shoes and I only got three Hot Wheels cars. Only because that day it was a buy two get three deal for them. And now the main story. A couple of weeks ago, I was going to a car meet in Zagreb when I spotted a dog that looked exactly like my bongo. Bongo has his left eye missing because of another dog who was attacking him, so that's why I knew it must be him. I told my dad I would be back in a minute, and walked up to the man who was walking him. Conversation as follows, everything was translated from Croatian. Excuse me sir, may I see your dog for a second? Yeah sure, he's very good with people, he's not gonna bite. May I say he looks exactly like my dog? Oh well, uh, what's his or her name? His name was Bongo? Uh. His name is also Bongo. Sir, where did you get this dog? At this point, the dog started to whine out of happiness and started jumping around like crazy. I bought him from a lady five years ago. My heart sank to the floor. Can you please describe the lady who sold you the dog? Short, short dyed blue hair, had a small blue purse and drove a white Kia? You literally just described my mom? She said my dog went missing five years ago. I asked the man if he could come over to our house with Bongo to ask my mom a few questions. He said yes, I explained everything to my dad, and he also recognized the dog. When we got home, when Bongo stepped into my house, when my mom saw him and the man, everything started coming together. I wish you could have seen my mom's face, white as a ghost. We had a serious talk for several hours, and Bongo ended up back with me. We helped the man get another dog and kept in touch. I stopped talking to my mom and I'm still not talking to her. And also, my mom is a serious liar and a horrible person who did many other bad things, which I won't talk about now, maybe some other time. Hope you have a nice day. Okay, um, wow, that is an amazing coincidence that he just happened to run into his dog. Just, that's absolutely crazy. And, um, that mother is... Definitely not a very good person for doing that. Oh my gosh, that's that's actually horrible. But at least they got the dog back. Like, that is amazing, actually. Like, I'm surprised the dude just gave his dog of five years, you know, back to the previous owners. Like, that is a really good dude there. This story's called, Racist Entitled Dad Tries to Kill Me and My Father Over a Video Game. I have posted this story before in other subreddits because I didn't have enough karma. Now that I do, it's time to share my second most scary childhood story. So a little backstory. In my country, every village has a single priest to work the church every Sunday morning. So every priest in every village is a loved man and is considered something like God's associate. So he is a very respected man. The incident happened back when the PS2 was a huge thing and me and my family just moved in the village. So me and the priest's son, we are the only kids in the whole village that own a PS2 and that was great. We were always talking about games and stuff and at the beginning we were good friends. Until one day. We were in our second recess in school and I told the kid that I just got GTA San Andreas from a delivery I made a few days before. The kid was absolutely stunned that I managed to have this game because the village is very religious. And you guys know what GTA San Andreas is, I hope. And he begged me to trade it with him for a copy of FIFA 2005, which had online mode too. I really liked the kid at the time, so I said sure, why not? I told him I would give it to him for a week. It was Monday, 
so I would have it back the next Monday. So I gave it to him as soon as I got it from the post office after school. Huge mistake. Next week, I asked him for the game, and he said that he wanted to finish the game first and then give it back later. I told him that I didn't agree to that and told him to buy his own copy if he wanted to finish it. And I demanded him to give it to me. He said that he didn't give a crap and also added that, and words like me shouldn't own the game anyway. I am black and I get easily offended by comments like this. So I grabbed him by the throat and shoved him down in the ground and told him that if he called me that again, I would beat his booty. I was like a really tall kid and we were both like 11 to 12 years old. He cried and shouted for a teacher to save him. A teacher came and separated us and asked us what happened. I told everything and the teacher didn't even bother to ask the other kid's side of the story since it was known that he is very spoiled. Let's call the teacher Miss Amy. So Amy was new to the school and didn't have any past experiences with this kid or the priest. We were both taken to the principal's office and Amy told what happened. But the principal didn't punish the kid because he was afraid of the priest and let us go. On the way out, the kid said that he would tell his dad about everything and that he would make me go back to Africa and Amy to go work as a hooker. Now here enters Entitled Parent aka Priest. Next day, I went to school. As soon as I got off the bus, I was confronted by the priest who slapped me and took me to the principal's office. He asked the principal to call Amy in the office too and my parents. When my parents arrived, they were afraid of what the priest would do to us since we were black and new to the village. He slapped me again in front of my parents and said that I should be ashamed that I made his angel cry. Seems that the kid pretended to cry when he got back home to gain the priest's attention about the situation. Then he said, without asking the principal or anyone else, that Amy was fired and that I was expelled and threw the GTA disc in my face and told me to be ashamed that I lured his son into lovemaking video and drugs and added that since we were black, it was not uncommon for this to happen. I flipped. I was beyond urinated at this point. But my father told me not to say anything as it turns out he was recording the whole time and took the 12 minute recording to the head office of all the churches. I don't know how to translate the name in English. So basically, where the Pope was in charge of everything. We waited in line with my father for four hours until we finally got to see him. We introduced ourselves and told him the situation and played the recording. When the recording was done, he asked us for the priest's name. We told him and he said that he was fed up with him as he used to abuse his power at the previous village too. He dismissed us and told us not to worry about him. Five days later, the kid left the school and his father got fired and left the village with his family. I was kinda happy when he left, even though the other villagers were angry at us. They didn't act, yet when they did, well, that belongs in another story. Everything went normal and I thought we had gotten rid of him for good. Until one month later, me and my dad were driving to the mall until we saw a red pickup truck coming at us full speed. It crashed into us from the right side and the driver got out of the driver's seat and in my horror, I saw that priest looking at me with hatred in his eyes. And for 12 year old me, that was hella scary. But I didn't notice that he had a gun in his hand. He was yelling that if us and words didn't leave his country, he was going to kill us. We called the cops and a passenger from another car sneaked behind him and held him down until they came. When they did, it was obvious that the ex-priest was drunk and had an illegal possession of a gun. He was cuffed and taken away and also had to pay for the damages. Thank God me and my dad survived this. That priest had absolutely no business being a priest. Um, and you know what? Despite all these, um, all the reports of priests doing things they shouldn't be doing, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I've never personally met a mean priest, but that's probably because I haven't met many priests. So yeah, that priest bad guy, obviously. Um, the kid, he's a punk. There's no other way to put it. I mean, I could get more creative, but you know, demonetization. This story is called Entitled Mother Demands a Slushy. So while I was a senior in high school, I worked in a Kmart for the Christmas season. One night, about 10.30 p.m., right before closing, a mother and daughter walk in. The daughter looked like she was in pain, and the mother makes a beeline for me. Excuse me, can my daughter have a slushy? A bit of context. The Kmart I worked at was one that had a pizza chain in it that, when open, served slushies. I'm sorry, I don't work for pizza chains, so I can't get you the slushy. 
My daughter just had her wisdom teeth pulled and needs a slushie to help with the pain. I knew that it would make her daughter's situation a bit worse by causing a dry socket. Plus, only pizza chain employees were allowed to turn on the slushy machine or any beverage machine in the section. I can try, but like I said, I'm not authorized to turn on the machine. Just try! I proceed to grab a cup and find a way to turn on the machine. Actually, I was just going through the motions. I'm sorry, I can't find a way to turn on the machine. Well, can you at least get her a soda or water? My daughter is in pain! I told you already that only pizza chain employees can turn on the machines in their area, and they are closed. You are welcome to buy a bottle of water before we close. My daughter is in pain from her surgery and wants a slushie. If you can't get her one, then I will tell your manager. My manager arrives after seeing this on the cameras, wondering why I haven't finished my closing duties yet, and asks me what is going on. Your employee won't get my daughter a slushie. Well, he is not authorized to turn on the machine since only pizza chain employees can only do it. And they are closed at this time. The daughter and entitled mother walk out in a big huff. I felt sorry for the daughter at this time. Some people's parents. Man, these entitled parents need to get more original. How many of them need to go to a restaurant after they're closed? Come on! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.